Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Elena Gross, a neuroscientist, PhD in clinical research founder of Keto Swiss. The second pillar for mastering the migraine is all about increasing antioxidant capacity and decreasing oxidative stress. Those free radicals that can damage your mitochondria, your cells, your DNA, and so on, and thereby really impair energy metabolism. Antioxidant capacity really refers to your own ability to neutralize those harmful reactive oxygen species. That's really antioxidant capacity, and it largely depends on your genetic capacity to build enzymes that can actually catch those free radicals. Your environment matters too, and really changing your environment in such a way through a healthy lifestyle, all of the things we have already discussed in other sections, will increase the expression of your antioxidant enzymes. And even if your personal antioxidant enzymes are not the best, you can at least make more of these, and the imperfect enzymes can then thereby catch more free radicals now there's strengthening your own antioxidant capacity on the one hand, but there's also a myriad of various different ways on how you can reduce oxidative stress levels in the first place. And this is at least as important. One rather intuitive way to do so is called pacing. Pacing really is basically just saying that you are not using up energy faster than your mitochondria are able to produce it so that there's always a small surplus of energy, you're not using up more energy than you have, and you stay in something called your homeostatic window. And we will discuss this in a bit. I personally have found that this is way easier said than done. And um, when the total amount of physical and mental stress that is a body is working on at a given moment, that is called allostatic load. And the given allostatic load is very individual and how much we can deal with it depends on your genetics and your environment again as well. And of course, most importantly, your current health. Really staying in homesis, this phenomenon of homesis, with this, which is basically the idea that small amounts of um, stress on the body, such as sauna, cold exposure, maybe even exercise, after the removal of the stressor can make you stronger because you are now learning to deal with these stressors and then when the stress becomes higher at some point you will be more equipped so as a migraineer we will always want to stay in our hermetic window and the size of the window really depends on how bad on the stage you're in you may be at a curtain state where your allostatic window your hermetic window is really small and you can only grow if you stay in that window and if you don't outdo it in order to reduce oxidative stress one of the first ways is stay in your hematic zone. The next area that is super critical for reducing oxidative stress is that of reducing toxic load in food, drink, environment, water, home care products, really anywhere. Many things can damage mitochondria, but very few things have such devastating effects as toxins, in particular heavy metals. Heavy metals have become ubiquitous in today's world. We have dug up the earth, brought them to the surface, and now we're using it in so many different products and appliances that you can't even imagine. And they are now spread really around the earth. Pesticides, herbicides, plastics, hormone active substances, uh, toxins in food, hygiene products, carpets, curtains, in, in your wall, in your floor, in your air, in your water supply. Toxins really are everywhere and we can hardly escape them, but we can try our best to avoid them as much as possible by eating organic, by using organic cosmetics, by using organic hygiene products, by cleaning the water, especially if you live in the US, um, by cleaning the air, if you live in London or any big city, Tokyo, whatever it may be, getting an air purifier, really trying to escape toxins as much as you can for our mitochondria to keep as healthy as possible. And then the la lastly, uh, processed foods really are toxins as well. Highly processed foods as well as alcohol are also very pro-oxidative and should be avoided in large quantities in order to reduce oxidative stress and the toxic load in your lifestyle and diet. That leads us to one last or another point in this category, which is optimizing light exposure. Blue light emitted from the screen, from your phone, from also artificial lamps, it really is also pro-oxidative. Whether it goes through your skin or through your retina, it drastically increases oxidative stress, which must be neutralized. And so reducing blue light 
during the day, but especially at night, is essential. At night, also for another reason, blue light actually blocks melatonin. You may have heard of melatonin before, it's our sleep hormone, but what you may not be aware of is that melatonin is actually one of the strongest antioxidants that we have. And it really is keeping our mitochondria well and healthy, and it also is uh, helping our mitochondria detox through the night. And lastly, not only the avoidance of certain light is important, but also the presence of certain light. Natural daylight is not only very important for boosting your vitamin D levels, which is so important for health in general and also for reducing migraine, but it also will set your circadian rhythm. Your circadian rhythm is basically dictating when certain genes in your body are expressed and they will dictate when you sleep, when you eat, when you're awake, when you're feeling a certain way. Almost any gene or so many different genes in the body actually align to the circadian rhythm. So getting right early in the morning, setting your clock will also help you make more melatonin at night. So getting natural daylight throughout the day is also super important. One way to reduce blue light if you do have to work on a laptop or you do want to watch that movie at night, which I'm also wanting to, is uh, getting blue light blocker glasses. Those are basically yellow tinted glasses. They can also be very orange that will block a certain amount of blue light and hence will keep the oxidative stress at bay and will keep the impact that that movie or the laptop has on your sleep quality at bay as well. When managing oxidative stress, trying to reduce oxidative stress, we should never forget mental or psychological stress which should not be underplayed. This is really as physical as physical stress like exercise can be. If you look at stress or stresses at a chemical level, chemical stresses, physical stresses, and even mental stresses are fairly similar in what they do. They all elevate these free radicals that we really need to catch for a long and healthy life and a migraine free or a migraine mastered life for sure. And I want to give you a few tips that help myself a lot to keep psychological stress at bay. You can try to, number one, learn to say no. I know this is sounding simple, but it's very hard, especially at the beginning, but you don't have to please everyone. You have to please yourself. You owe it to yourself to, to say no when it is really too much on your plate and you are overwhelmed. It's completely okay to say no once in a while. Now, the other thing is employ an 80-20 principle. This is also so important. It really, I mean, now being a CEO, this is what saves my life. Also getting things done at university. Being a perfectionist really doesn't get you anywhere because you try to give 100% of effort for very little outcome. Because if you spend 100% of effort on every single little task, you won't get anything done. And that is so stressful. What I try to do now is employ 20% of the effort for 80% of the outcome. And you will find that this 80% outcome, a lot of people around you will see as 100% anyway. So the extra 20% to get from 80 to 100 may take up 80% of your effort and it's really not worth it. So really read up on this principle, try to apply it to your own life. It's so helpful. Third strategy is really planning and breaking down tasks. This sounds so simple, but often being overwhelmed stems from these mountains of things that have to be done and you don't know where to begin. So breaking down tasks into small manageable chunks makes it so much easier. Make the first chunk the smallest because also the anxiety with getting started comes from these huge tasks that you think you can never get done. And starting, actually, having started, even though it may be the most trivial of things, also can reduce anxiety a lot. Take breaks. Sounds simple, but how many people are just slaving away and they don't really take the break to stop, revitalize, go out for a walk, have a snack, talk to your neighbor, talk to your friend, talk to your family, your colleague, whatever it may be that helps you get less stress and then go on to the next task with revitalized energy. Uh, it's super important and it's also nothing to be ashamed of. It's something to be proud of. Schedule in breaks. It's for the better of everyone and doesn't make you a slacker. Get rid of toxic or unstable relationships. Focus on the ones that make you good most of the time. And here I really try to employ a simple math formula which is, is the net result positive? So if you sum up all the interactions throughout a year, is the net result of this positive or negative? If it's negative, it's draining your energy. Don't be scared of getting rid of these people. It may be hard if it's a relationship that you cannot control, such as a work colleague, or maybe a relative. You know, this could be your dad or your grandfather and you just cannot get rid of them. 
If that is the case, you cannot get rid of the person, then you may want to employ the next strategy of mine, which is simply tuning the sender receiver or fine tuning the sender receiver a messaging. What does that mean? Well, when you cannot control the message because you cannot get rid of some people in your lives, they will always be sending out certain messages that can be perceived as harmful or as damaging or as rude. You cannot change the sender, but you are the receiver of that message. And the way you receive the message entirely depends on your interpretation of that message. So really trying to see, did that person have a bad past? Is there any reason this could be misinterpreted and it's maybe not actually meant this way? Are they insecure? Do they have other problems? Is there any way that you can talk yourself into believing that they're actually to pity and there's maybe something about them or their upbringing that they cannot actually act in a more positive way? And this way you may be able to forgive them. And that's point number seven, so important and so stress reducing forgive others. Are you possibly still hurt by those friends or colleagues or relatives even that were annoyed by your migraines and called you unreliable and that you should pull yourself together? Does this still hurt? If this is the case, try to imagine these people one at a time as vivid as you can. Imagine sitting in front of them, really look at them and say, I forgive you. And when you do this correctly, this can be so liberating. It's one of the best things that you can do. And one of the most powerful feelings and relieving feelings that I've had, forgiving that childhood bully that has uh, made my teenage years really help. And now I can look back to that experience and it does not hurt anymore. Forgive yourself. Migraines was never your fault. Being unreliable was never your fault. You were born with unfortunate genetics, maybe even fortunate genetics, but just for that context, unfortunate genetics in an unfortunate environment. You didn't know better. You've tried the hardest. You have achieved so much. You have nothing to be forgiven about. And if you manage to forgive yourself, last point is one of the most important ones, which is love yourself. You have all the reason to love yourself with all the things that you have achieved. It's so important that you can look in the mirror and really say to yourself, I love you. And I love you. You're here and you're doing your best. Last things are talk to a loved one. It always helps. Most people, it does help. If you have somebody you trust, whatever you're experiencing and going through, talking to somebody who can listen, truly listen, will help deal with the stress. If you have experienced real trauma, professional help might, might really be, um, be an option. So getting psychotherapy is nothing to be ashamed of. It can help you as well. And lastly, treat yourself. You have to remember to treat yourself. Life is not only about running after hassles, even if you lead a startup and write a book at the same time and try to educate people about migraine on YouTube. I also have to remind myself that I need to treat my body for what it is going through and achieving every day. And whatever it is that really makes you feel good about yourself, you have to schedule that into your daily or weekly routine at least. And last but not least, one of my favorites is forest bathing. It's called forest bathing now these days from Japan, but really it's something I've been doing thanks to my parents all my life is just immersing myself in nature, going through forest, getting that green light, green light being analgesic, breathing in that oxygen rich, uh, clean air. Also again, massively good for your mitochondria, connecting your skin to the grass, you know, the grounding experience. All of this should hopefully help with your psychological well-being, which will again reduce oxidative stress. Now, last but not least, when we're reducing oxidative stress levels, it is important to improve mitochondrial functioning. Mitochondria are the place really where a lot of the free radicals are actually produced. So having the powerhouses work well really will help your oxidative stress levels. Some of the ways that you can do and work on them is, for example, breathing. Wim Hof a method, 478 breathing. You can Google those or even supplemental oxygen when you are enduring an attack. Then another thing that can help mitochondria is actually cold exposure. Just immersing yourself in cold can activate heat shock proteins and also be very beneficial for mitochondrial functioning. And the other direction works as well, which is sauna. Again, heat shock proteins, it's a bit like exercise and can help with detox as well. You can detox a lot through your skin. 
Infrared light has been shown to improve uh, mitochondrial functioning and also improve uh, catch free radicals itself. I personally do it. I have one hanging over my bed. It's quite rejuvenating uh, for somebody as, as sick as me or who used to be as sick as me. Now, another important thing that you should never forget about is sleep. Sleep really helps you detox, reset, improve mitochondrial functioning, clean out all the garbage. So getting eight hours or so a night of sleep is essential and also a kind of a good hour if possible. So don't compromise on sleep if you are a migraine patient. It's radiation that has come up more and more frequently, which is just, you know, too much of those Wi-Fi signals, phone signals, electromagnetic frequency. Humans are electromagnetic beings. Every cell is electromagnetic. So having too much radiation come on us is also very stressful, which again will raise oxidative stress. So try to reduce EMF at least overnight. Ideally turn down Wi-Fi if you can, put your phone in flight mode and uh, stay away from the microwave while you're sleeping. If you have been sitting a lot in front of your laptop or you are generally very tense in the neck, it can also be that your muscles are so dense that they're basically clutching onto the blood supply and the supply of your brain. So relieving neck tension can also really help migrate if neck tension is one of the reasons why your brain is running out of energy. And last but not least, circadian rhythms are impacting so many different genes and metabolism at the same time. So try to get your circadian rhythm in order. Especially as a migraineur, it does not make sense to go to bed at 5 a.m. one night and at 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. the other night and go like this all day. It will completely mess up metabolism and your circadian rhythm. This does not mean if you're good enough that you should never go out because that is also important for psychological well-being. But in general, at least let's say five out of seven days, try not to jet lag your body too much. And if you do, take melatonin. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Elena Gross, a neuroscientist, PhD in clinical research, founder of Kilo Swiss.